what we wound up doing was uh, in the uh, construction of the uh, tip to the shoe uh, and uh, to understand that a little more clearly I guess uh, oh well uh, we started off with uh, tips that had about eight mils or eight thousandths of an inch <clears throat> uh, usable tip area and that we're looking from the bottom of the winding window out to the edge of the tip this would be the back end and this would be the, the area of the edge that runs in contact with the tape. So uh, your usable tip area is you know, from this edge down to the winding window. And of course if you wear down that low you're wearing through the gap. And your gap is right here. You know you have this pole and this pole and then you have a gap between them. So uh, our tips had an average of about eight and a half mils or eight and a half thousandths of uh, usable tip area. So uh, it's a good practice to you never want to go to the bottom of the gap. And it's a good practice to stay about a mil above the bottom of the gap. And when you are putting this tip in position on the aluminum shoe for epoxy, then uh, you would uh, make this point here, your reference, to the uh, outer circumference of the drum disc. So uh, this point on your tip would be about one mil past the uh, outer rim of the drum itself. So, uh, well, eight and a half minus one, that leaves you with seven and a half mils of usable tip. And uh, when you contour the uh, tip radius it, on the drum, then that's going to eat up another meal or a meal and a half in the contouring process. And so you wind up with, uh, after it's mounted and uh, on the shoe and then you mount it on the drum and you line it up and you contour it, you wind up with about five and a half to six meals. of uh, usable tip. Well, you can't really use that um, in, you know, it's too much tip projection. But uh, the way you, we 
came up with to get around that was uh, on the shoe on the Ampex design you have a, uh, a radial adjustment on the back end of the shoe so uh, you it would look like uh, the aluminum shoe would be uh, see if I can draw this right something like this This is the uh, the anchor, the screw that you anchor it to the drum with, and uh, this little uh, this little hole in the back that has a relief slot cut in it. That is for the, for the radial adjustment, and the radial adjustment is a little eccentric pin or an offset pin that uh, well it looks a little bit like this this is a round pin. This part here would be seated in this uh, hole here under some tension. Uh, there's a slot cut here, a relief slot. So if this hole was slightly smaller than the diameter of this part of the pin, then it's going to want to cinch around that and hold it in position. And uh, this part here that's tapered fits into a hole in the drum, so that's your anchor part. And what happens when you rotate this, uh, when this is loose, uh, the idea is the uh, center of this gap all the way down the length of the tip needs to line up with the center hole of the drum. And so you're looking from the center of this center hole in the drum out. 90 degrees. So you have 0, 90, 180, 270. And those are radians, uh, you know, straight lines from the exact center of that center of the drum, the hole, which is actually the center of the shaft in the motor. And the idea of this being offset is if you turn this, then you're moving that, jogging it from side to side in order to get this gap to coincide with that radial, that radian. Uh, the idea being is as this, gap, as this tip wears down through use, hours of use, uh, you want this uh, gap to be lined up, you know, from the center out uh, 
so as it wears down it doesn't skew off and throw your quadrature out of alignment you know between the four heads you know your 90 degree uh, quadrature and that's what that's about is is you get the gap lined up on that radian line and uh, the way you do it is you line it up using this little offset eccentric uh, pin here that allows you to tilt that uh, to get the axis to line up. And so as your tip wires down, then this is in line with your 90 degrees or 180 or 270 or 0 and it doesn't skew off axis as it wires down so you don't really see that much of a quadrature error becoming wider as it wires down uh, okay that's that's all standard stuff, but uh, what we wanted to do was to utilize this extra tip and it all revolves around the position of this eccentric pin. You know, it's, uh, well, eccentric, that would be like an ellipse. I know I'm not a very good artist, so. But, uh, so if you're looking at the top of this pen, down on it, and you're rotating it, then it's actually rotating in an elliptical fashion and uh, so what happens is you have two points at which this radian is going to line up your uh, gap in the uh, tip. You have a forward point and then you have a, the uh, reverse the rear point forward and rear and uh, so if we orient this pin to line up on the rear side of this uh, coincidence you know the radian in coincidence with the gap on the rearward side of this lobe on this pin and we're back here and that moves this down or nearer to the uh, surface of the drum and consequently that means instead of having six mils TP then you're going to have less maybe three that's what we're shooting for and uh, so as this wears down at this setting you get down to three mils well that's basically down in your uh, your run out area on the drum. Now remember this one mil safety margin. So you get into that area when you wear this down three mils approximately at this setting of the, the lobe on this offset pin. Well when you reach that point, 
then you can rotate this pin 180 degrees around to the forward side of the load and that moves this out. And like that. And you're back in alignment here again. And you can achieve optimum radial alignment on this side of the lobe, which is going to move your tip out a few more mils from the drum surface. And so that's how we achieve being able to use a 6 mil contour tip instead of a standard 3 mil. And, you know, the, the result of all this is you double the life that you can get out of your tip. Now, that's the good part, tips. Uh, with this approach here. Now, the downside to that is uh, you have to do this yourself. You cannot, uh, in other words, a head refurbisher is not going to do this because, you know, there's calibration involved and, you know, uh, you have to have the ability to reset the tip alignment, you know, yourself if you were to go this route, in which that's what we chose to do because we were in a position to do this. And, uh, but having a, a refurbisher do this is not very practical for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, namely, is you have to re, uh, well, you have to have enough tip to begin with, and then at the uh, time that it becomes worn down to the the midpoint, then they would have to reorient the radial adjustments from this side of the lobe to that side to get three more meals. And they're not going to do that, you know, that's not uh, within practical, you know, it's, it's not practical to do that. But in our case, it was practical because we were doing all this on our own by ourselves. And uh, so, you know, through the through our work and experimentation, uh, we were able to come up with a uh, a way to do that, and it all really stemmed from the fact that we had very good results with the ferrite. You know, as far as the signal strength we were seeing uh, coming off the tape we were able to make a longer tip without seeing a lot of loss in the signal strength. So it all really began with the ferrite, the quality of the ferrite that we were using that enabled us to to go further into and explore the, uh, the possibilities of what we had. And this was kind of the, I guess, the uh, the culmination of all that. You know, we had the, uh, the uh, problem with the winding, uh, terms ratio versus the, the level, the signal level, or gain, if you would want to think of it that way, which is probably not... Uh, an accurate way to think of it, but uh, so we had an abundance of that, and so uh, even at the uh, the uh, 
longer tip lengths, we still had more signal than we needed to be within operating range. So that kind of led, you know, to the next step and the next step, and then uh, what can we do with this? And, and so basically that's how we came up with a way to utilize our long tip length over time and extend the life and the usable hours that we could get out of a set of tips on a drum. And of course, in order to do this, at the midpoint you have to have a, uh, a setup, a jig, or a, an appliance, a tool, in order to measure that, you know, microscopically and then readjust and get back on the radio. Uh, and of course we did all that and that took even more time to, to do that part, the mechanical part. Uh, but eventually we did get to where we wanted to be. And so, uh, so that's a little, I guess, a little lesson in uh, hips and shoes and radiuses and radials and head re-tipping 101, I guess. <laughs> Uh, that became possible, you know, because we were doing this ourselves. Um, you know, when we could make the outcome, you know, we could come up with the outcome that we wanted, you know, using our operating within our parameters that we had with the materials we were using. So that was kind of nice to, after all that work and, and I really give Zdenek uh, the credit for that. He was just tireless in his pursuit you know of, of all of this and I just kind of stayed in the background and supplied him with what he needed the resources or the materials or the tools and just kind of took a step back and let him go at it and boy did he ever. And well and once in a while a question would come up and then I have my friend Bev who had retired from Ampex. So he was our go-to guy. We could, you know, if we really came up with something that we couldn't figure out or didn't know the answer to or you know I could always go visit Bev and you know he's he's been there and he's done it and so he, he usually had an answer for for every problem we could find <laughs> so it's uh, it's really nice when things work out and and so I'm very happy to share what little information we have on our head building experiences with you. And maybe that'll inspire someone to maybe carry this a little further. And uh, in the future I think that's going to be what it boils down to is, is uh, some of the individuals around the world that want to do this on their own you know maybe in a smaller capacity or an experimental or just you know to be doing something because I really don't think the days are going to be very long for commercial industries to continue with the head rebuilding technology very much longer and you know we could debate about that another time but but uh, it's it's always nice to have a plan B.